The main purpose of the scientific computing department is to support the scientists when they perform their computational biology. So this can include helping them run simulations in terms of determining the structures of proteins or running large machine learning models in order to predict protein folding with something like AlphaFold or even doing genetic or genomic analysis of large sequences. The sort of data sets we're dealing with are you know, extremely large, so they're tens of terabytes on scale. So we have our high performance computing or supercomputing clusters. That consists of 7,240 CPU cores uh, and about 228 separate GPU cards. So they're far more powerful than your regular desktop computer, which wouldn't be able to run any of these models at all, you know, even let's say a tenth of them. The old tradition in a lot of computer infrastructures of giving uh, computers that people use you know, personalities. The interactive computers that people want to connect to and log into, we gave names of famous computers from film. You know, we have Hex and uh, Hal and Max, and Hex is the Empire supercomputer from the Discworld series, and Hal is obviously from you know, Kubrick's you know, 2001. Hex and HAL are what we call logon servers. So they're big boxes with quad socket 224 CPUs. They act as both launch pads for cluster job. That, that's where people can submit their jobs to the cluster. The cluster, the high performance computer cluster, is an array of 200, 250 individual nodes. They're controlled by Slurm, which is the queue manager. You can then submit a job which will then be farmed out across multiple nodes. You could certainly describe a cluster as achieving its you know, efficiency and speed much as the way a beehive does, and that there are thousands and thousands of individual workers all performing a, you know, a, a task which adds together to make a greater sum. So one of the nice things about Slurm is that it can manage energy that's used by the cluster, so there are around about 200 nodes in the cluster in total and Slurm will shut them down if they're not being used, uh, reducing the amount of power that's, that's, that's needed. Some of the nodes will use you know, 200 watts just in standby and you can reduce that to 4 watts per node and this has saved about 10 tonnes of CO2 in the past six months which is quite a change and it saves money. Everybody on the team will be contributing on a day-to-day basis to maintain the cluster, uh, the, 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 the central systems working. But we also will all have a number of projects which we're working on. So, you know, I'm working on building storage systems with a Raspberry Pi so people can take the, all the data on their desks and things. I've got two major projects on at the moment. I'm building a, a Dropbox locally hosted file store, file sharing facility. We need more storage and more resilience and integration with the local authentication systems. The most surprising thing about my job, the fact that I actually have to think about cosmic rays. As you know, as we've got the sun nearby, every now and again you have you know, highly charged particles coming in. They can actually interfere with some of our computing hardware here and cause stuff like bit flipping or other things like that. I mean, we have petabytes and petabytes of data, so it's not really feasible to restore from backup. You know, it's effectively impossible. So instead we have to think of a far cleverer solution to kind of unwind the knot rather than just starting from scratch again. And that sort of um, very fine surgeon-like precision of fixing and rolling back failed transactions, for example, is another thing I, I really enjoy doing. I don't think I have a favourite part of the job. It's the fact that it's made up of so many facets. There's problems coming in from everywhere from people whose software said, this doesn't work, or how can I make this work better? I have this monitoring bit for, uh, for the cluster, and I'll notice that a particular user constantly has nodes that um, have issues, and I can raise the issue matter with them saying, do you know we have a problem here? Can I help you sort this one out? So the best thing about working at LMB is that I am never bored. There's always something to do, getting fresh hardware, new latest technology to go and experiment on and see how fast it goes. That's probably one of the best things. For me as a trained computational chemist, I really enjoy sort of speaking with the scientists here, learning about their projects and also seeing what I can do using my sort of knowledge and skills in terms of 
supercomputing things and my Linux abilities to really help them do that. Um, we're very much allowed to get on and do our own thing in our own way. The philosophy that uh, Jake had when I started was, if I've built it, I understand it better. We'll get boxes of servers, we'll get boxes of CPUs, boxes of RAM. We will build the system from bare bones. We will put the software that we see fit to do the job. We will do the networking and the cabling. So the main change in almost 20 years that I've been here has been the massive increase in use of you know, scientific computing facilities, of the a thousand-fold increase in the amount of data we have stored here. Probably about 10,000 increase in the compute power that we have. We now find that about 40 to 50 percent of, of the work in the lab, the whole lab, all, the, all four divisions, is reliant on this facility. If you go and increase the scope of your question and you say how much of the LMB uses scientific computing, actually it's 100 percent because not only do we provide the hardware platform for compute and data storage, we also provide you know, the email services, we provide the system which allows a laptop anywhere in the building to be plugged into the to work. To we supply edge your own. Our tendrils go deep into, into, into the building here.